So I trust you can see us now on YouTube. And with this, uh, I'm going to get started. So a very warm welcome to everyone watching this now. Um, welcome to this kickoff event and welcome to the summer term 2021. And I'd like to especially welcome those of you who are beginning the studies with us now. And uh, it's kind of hard to believe I'm saying this for the third time now already in a row, but uh, unfortunately, we're not able to actually welcome you uh, in person on the actual university in the Günther Hotz uh, lecture hall where we usually do so, but uh, online here. Um, I suppose you're all somewhat getting used to how strange these times are. So I'm not going to lose a lot of words on this, but uh, believe me, we're all looking forward to actually meeting you again in person. Now, a few words uh, I have to say to those of you who haven't even been make, able, able to make it to Saarbrücken or even Germany yet. Um, I assure you, you can, we're going to try the best we can to help you. And in particular, uh, I can assure you that you will be able to study everything online. So physical presence is not required other than for some exams. And if you're not stable, uh, if you won't be able to even come to the exams, then we will find solutions. Uh, we already got quite some practice in this, so I hope it will work as smoothly as is possible under the strange circumstances. Um, in any case, uh, what you're seeing here is a Zoom meeting of the faculty, as you probably surely noticed by now, uh, which is being streamed to, the, streamed to the YouTube channel you're watching. And the reason why I'm speaking and everybody else is not speaking is that I'm currently the vice dean of the faculty and the speaker of the informatics department. And with this, let me get into the actual program and share my screen. Okay, so you should see my slides now. Actually, I have to reshare this. Sorry about this. I have to share my sound for later. Okay, here we go. So, um, uh, these are my slides on the first slide it's just the program for today so i'm gonna be starting this kickoff event with a small semester opening talk uh, which is a traditional thing we do every term and i'm going to give some news of the faculty essentially so this is really just uh, saying hello in a, a few more words than this then the students council is going to welcome you as well and then uh, Jan Reinecke, who is the current Dean of Studies, is going to tell you about teaching modalities in the summer term. So uh, the essentials, basically, given the uh, pandemic circumstances, uh, these are the same things, essentially the same messages we already sent to you the last two terms. But some of you are new here. And in any case, it's important to remind yourselves of these things. And the whole thing is also accompanied by YouTube chat in which you can ask questions. Um, I think to a degree those will be answered live, but what will certainly be done is that those questions will be collected and then answers to all the questions will be put on our web page where you can always look them up. Good, and with this I'm going to get right into the presentation. Um, so first, I mean, we are proud. This is uh, one of the best, uh, the, the, the strongest informatics that in Germany, and we are proud of this, and we hope that you are proud of it, uh, being part uh, of this site. Um, to give you a little bit of an overview of the set, I'm going to just say a few words now in the next five minutes. So the informatics side consists of several university departments. There's, of course, the computer science department. We are in the faculty together with mathematics, and there's a very strong, long-standing collaboration, of course. We also have a decades-long, strong collaboration with the language, science, and technology department, uh, which is not in this faculty, but in another faculty and university. And then beyond the university, of course, a key strength of the site is all the research institutes that we have on site. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but let me just briefly pick out the DFKI, the German Research Center for AI, which is the largest institute for AI in Germany. It's got actually several sites across Germany, but the, the main and founding site is here in Saarbrücken. And two of the four Max Planck institutes concerned with informatics uh, topics are here in Saarbrücken. And finally, there's the most recent edition of the CISPA, which is one of just 18 Helmholtz centers in all of Germany. And it's the only one uh, concerned exclusively with informatics and it's also on the site here. So there's quite a lot of research power here, um, which is also um, visible in, in rankings. So for example, in the CHE ranking, which is uh, particularly interesting for students because it also uh, takes student opinions into account. 
And it's a pretty complex ranking. It altogether measures uh, 34 parameters or something in this ballpark. Uh, what you see here is a small overview based on four main primary criteria, um, actually an aggregation of several other criteria. And you have probably already seen that we are down here. And you can also see pretty quickly that we are one of the very few sites in Germany that have four green points. Okay, with this, I'm gonna uh, leave the bragging for today. Uh, so this is a great informatics site. We, we hope that you are glad to be here. And there's also many uh, advantages you have from being here. Uh, we have an extremely broad study program. We have lots and lots of opportunities to get to get deeply into certain sub areas of informatics and to even do research in that. Okay, those of you who have already been here know this picture. Uh, this is the uh, campus. Uh, not all of the buildings relevant to the informatics site are here um, because uh, that just wouldn't fit uh, usefully into, into a single photo. And I just, on my screen, I actually see Sven Rahman, a colleague who just joined us. We're gonna get to him in a few moments. And this is also the first time he sees the campus actually. Um, okay, so these are the buildings. Uh, as a gimmick, I also have this video here so you can actually, um, look at the campus in an animated way. Uh, so I'm just gonna play the video and I hope the song is gonna work for you. But uh, what's important is the picture anyway, the song is just a, a song. Okay. Okay, I hope this gives you a bit of an impression of what things look like over here or a reminder of what they look like over here if you've been here all along. Uh, these are just uh, pictures of the people on the faculty and I'm not gonna say anything about this other than that it's a fairly big faculty. And these people here are kind of special because at this moment they serve in the Dean's office. Uh, you see that I'm speaking, I'm the Vice Dean, like I already said. Jan Reinecke is the Dean of Studies. And the other two people, Thomas Schuster and Adam Lambert, are from mathematics. Um, so, uh, yeah. Good. Um, more important than the dean's office, perhaps, or certainly, actually, are the new faculty members who joined us during the last term. And it's a tradition that we briefly present them um, on this occasion. And in the last term, two new members joined our faculty. The first, uh, just alphabetically, is Fabian Müller, who was co-opted. So he's actually a member of a different faculty, but was co-opted to also be a professor in informatics. And unless I'm mistaken, Fabian is here. And if you could please say a few words about yourself. Sure. Welcome, everybody, to the new semester. Um, I'm Fabian Müller. I am freshly joined uh, the um, bioscience department. Um, but I have a strong background in computer science as well, and I'm interested in computational methods for studying how a cell interprets the um, genetic code. And uh, specifically, I'm interested in applied machine learning and AI and methods for big data integration. So if this is interesting to you, um, please consider um, a bachelor or master thesis maybe, uh, or maybe even a PhD. Um, I will be also teaching um, next semester um, uh, for the uh, bioinformatics students uh, on computational methods for epigenome analysis. Okay, thank you very much, Fabian, and a warm welcome again. And now, Sven, it's your turn. Yeah, hi, my name is Sven. Um, I just come from the University of Duisburg Essen, which is another place in Germany which is not very famous for its computer science. Uh, in fact, I come from the university hospital there. So I have been giving lectures and doing research in genome informatics for the past 10 years. And now I decided it was time to go back to more fundamental things like um, developing new algorithms. So my topic is algorithmic bioinformatics. And I will be teaching also this semester, which might be interesting for some computer science students as well on analysis of sequences. 
Um, in general, if you are interested in not purely theoretical algorithmics, but applied algorithmics in bioinformatics, uh, please come visit my webpage or find me in any other way online, and I will be happy to discuss also bachelor's and master's thesis. Okay, thank you again, Sven. And um, there's one more news in terms of uh, faculty. Christian Theobald was already a faculty member with us for quite a long time, but he has now become a scientific director at the MPI for informatics, which is quite a huge step. Unfortunately, I think Christian is not here today because he's still on vacation. Um, yes, okay. So Christian can join us uh, uh, today in this meeting, however, he. Uh, just became a scientific director at MPI. Okay, with this, um, I come to a different kind of news about awards. So um, again, uh, risking to brag a bit, uh, we are actually getting lots and lots of awards here. It's a, it's a very big site, hundreds of researchers, and there's quite a number of awards. And of course, we don't announce them all here, just the big awards. And uh, so what qualifies for big? Well, the ERC, the European Research Council Awards, certainly qualify for big. They are these days the really sort of the, the highest research prize you can achieve in Europe, uh, at least in terms of uh, monetary awards. So those also come with uh, very substantial finances. And we're very proud to have many ERC winners in the faculty. And one of them is Manuel Gomez Rodriguez, whose main affiliation is the MPI for Software Systems, who won an ERC starting grant during the last term. Uh, this is not the only uh, ERC grant. We actually have two more ERC grants during the last term by Holger Hermanns and Christoph Lenzen. And each of those are a proof of concept grant where essentially ERC awardees uh, get finances for or, for or towards transfer of their ideas. So to, towards implementing their ideas in practice. Okay. Um, so I'm going through this quickly, right? I don't want this to drag in too long. There is another kind of award that's fairly prestigious. Those are more like career awards, the so-called fellowships or memberships of prestigious academic bodies. One of them actually I won myself during the last term. The other one was Joel, Joel Wagnin. So those are awards that don't award one specific piece of research, but rather the, it's more like a career award awarding the contribution of that person during a, over a long time period. Good. And with this, I'm going to stop with the bragging and we'll turn to things that are more relevant for you as students. So one is, of course, the academic program, the reason why you're here. And our academic program is really uh, huge. Um, um, I mean, uh, to give you a comparison, I studied in Freiburg back in the mid 90s and we had exactly one study program. And uh, uh, I think I actually didn't have to do any choice of where to specialize in because it really was just one thing you could study. Now, of course, this is relatively extreme and uh, most that you do have a choice, but the choice here is really just amazing. And the things highlighted in red are new things that we've been introducing or that we've recently introduced. So we've decided to introduce them and then we'll start very shortly. And in particular, I would like to draw your attention to those two things here. Uh, we'll be starting English speaking, so uh, international English bachelor program soon. And this is pretty unique. In particular, it's the first time ever at this university that people can actually study in English from the beginning, from term one. Good. Uh, a huge study program also means that you will probably have lots and lots of questions, especially if you just began here. So especially if you're new at this university and this informatics site, if you have questions, of course, uh, your first point of contact will be the web page and then you can take it from there. There's lots and lots of people you can talk to. The contacts are all given on the web page and we're also on social media. So uh, please join us there. If you have questions, you can meet your fellow students and uh, our administrators. And of course, there's also all sorts of other moves. Okay, and this is already the end of my small uh, welcome presentation here. And with this, I'm going to hand over to the student council. Okay, thank you very much. Um, um, this should be the right window. All right. Um, hello, everybody. I'm part of the Students' Representative Council. So a warm welcome from all of us. We are a lot and um, we want to talk to you how we can help you and what we can do for you in the following semester. My name is Niels. 
and I am part of the Students Representative Council, one of these 15 people. You see here we are 15, we are 15 uh, elected members. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, of course. Um, however, you can see that there are many, many different colors, each color standing for a different um, course of study, as you already saw in Professor Hoffman's um, slides. There are a lot of courses of studies, and we hope to represent as many of them as possible. However, we can, of course, not always do that. Um, that's why we also have voluntary members. Um, another plot of colors. So um, if there's ever any problem and you see one of the people on this or the former slide, um, please come to us, talk to us. We want to help you and we most likely can. And if not so, we can always point you in direction where you have to ask. We are represented, or what do we represent actually? We represent all of these um, courses of study. However, we do not support, for example, math and computer science and business informatics, etc. Now, let me rephrase that. We support them, but we do not represent them as a student's council. They have separate um, student's councils. So if you have any questions, any of this, um, just come to us. But what is it that the Students' Council does? Our tasks are manifold. We basically provide services to all students. Um, this mostly includes computer science students, but we help some other students as well if they come and ask us, of course. We also support the ASTA in their, um, in their way of um, working with the university, support them in um, tasks they have to do, etc. cetera. Um, and we further represent all the students in front of the university and in front of the uh, institutes. So for example, we have a lot of talks to um, the, dean, the Dean of Studies over certain things uh, in the study regulation and the computer science department, et cetera. So if there are any things um, concerned with um, a higher political, you can, could call it that, um, things within the computer science department, the computer science students council is always there to represent the students. One of our main goals is of course, the improvement of the study environment. And we hope we do a lot of that um, for you, but later on a little bit more on that. And furthermore, of course, we try to organize some social and cultural events. You know, everything's on hold, but we try to do um, as much of it as um, online as we can. Now, Students' Council as a service. The services that we provide to you directly now are basically two or three larger things. We have the students pr student printer, which is currently sadly not available. Normally you would have a, a, around 100 pages per month that you could completely free print. However, what we do give you is the thesis printing. So if you want to have your thesis printed, you can do it with the Students' Council. They are of a high quality and rather inexpensive. So we don't get any money from that. We just have to cover our costs instead of um, other private um, printer companies where you do have to pay like 80 euros. We are more in the vicinity of five, maybe. And last but not least, we have a 3D printer that is available to students, just not at, during Corona, but um, collect all your ideas that you have and then you can come to us and um, only pay for the filament so that you can have all your 3D printed stuff. Another thing that we provide you is thought protocols. Um, they, of course, you know them, they prepare you, help you prepare for exa uh, exams and tests, etc. cetera. Um, we currently do have 70-ish thought protocols on our website, which you can find easily. Um, however, we, of course, depend on you if you have not seen a thought protocol for your um, course of study or a certain lecture, just come to us and uh, hand them in and we will see about publishing them. And last but not least, the most important thing maybe the Students' Council does is we have an open ear for any and all of your problems. So come to us if you have orientation problems, if you have personal problems, any problem. We cannot always help, but we can always turn you in a direction or point you in the direction um, where you can get help. That's the least we can do. Otherwise, we will sit down with you and try to solve the problem with you. The only restriction on this probably is we are not private tutors. So, of course, some of us have already 
um, listen to some of the lectures, but um, it's not private, no private tutoring. And with this, um, to Martin. Okay, my name is Martin Bessig. I'm also an elected member such as Niels of the student council. And as he said, we organize events. And for that, if you don't uh, follow us on social media or uh, anywhere else, you can subscribe to our mailing list. We have three of those. One, as mentioned before, for events, another one for student shops. And the last but not least, um, the mailing list for open discussion lists and protocols. We always make like uh, one protocol every two weeks. So next we have events like Neil said, but Unfortunately, the events you will see most likely and will likely be uh, will take a, lit a next semester, maybe the after semester after that, because of Corona, we can't um, do brunches and you can't do summer barbecue for obvious reasons. But we would hope that it will um, be next semester. So other events we do is the next. The next will be uh, this year as well, but online. So before that, it was always uh, uh, um, live on the campus and the computer science uh, faculty. But this time it will be online, um, but not the Nico theater because uh, we sadly can't give you like um, crap on like online. <laughs> so uh, another events we can uh, talk about are like the get togethers where you can get in our fast um student council uh, room and I don't know, hang out, hang out with like other people there. Uh, then we also always did a pub crowd at the beginning of a semester, so you can uh, network and introduce you, yourself to new students and, I don't know, get some new contacts. All of those uh, are obviously cancelled. Um, then what we did uh, before Corona was a smash evening with a little bit of board games. Uh, we hope we can do this after Corona as well. But the event that isn't cancelled is the um, Game Nights event. Um, we will try to do those um, at least from now on monthly so that you can participate in those. It will be like online Game Nights with certain games. You don't have to pay for them. They are all free. Um, we managed to uh, get a hold of some copies. So, yeah. So if you haven't followed us on any social media, we are present on social media. You all see those, which we can recommend the most, in my opinion, is the Discord, because you can ask live questions there and we try to help each other and try to help you, like needs that. So um, if you consider to subscribing uh, to those, uh, feel free to. Most uh, The best recommendation is the Discord. So where you can find us is, like you can see on the map, it's in the computer science department. Um, the red arrows are just like where you enter, and then the second red arrow to the right is where we are. But since it's Corona, we aren't there live. OK. And now to our last point of um, <laughs> the Students' Council. We are proud to once again award the Busy Beaver. Um, the Busy Beaver Awards are our way of awarding professors and lecturers with an award that tells them that they have done a great job in the last semester. We um, hand out these awards to outstanding lectures and seminars. And all of the awards are based on the feedback that the students gave partly based on the quality evaluation and um, further information that we gathered from the students as well. The Busy Beaver was sadly not able to um, be handed out within the last semesters due to Corona. Um, however, now once again, we can do this and um, award the people with, with the certificate from us, as well as a gift basket um, that they can enjoy later. Now, um, the Busy Beaver is divided into three subcategories. Um, and we want to start with the base lecture right now. Um, the base lecture is basically all the lectures that are that are mandatory for a student. So with you can imagine in um, in your bachelor's, you all had to do programming one and two, mathematics one, two, three, etc. So these lectures that are all necessary and mandatory are counted um, under the base lecture tag. And this year we want to award the base lecture to Programmierung 1, um, to Professor Bernd Finkbeiner and his team. Yeah, give him a set of applause. He did an outstanding lecture. And um, 
Professor Finkbeiner, I thought I think I saw you. So if you want to say some words. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Uh, um, that's really a great honor. And uh, well, thanks. Uh, Programming One is a lecture I, I truly love. And uh, we had a lot of fun uh, this semester. Um, maybe let me just quickly uh, say a thank you to the uh, tutors uh, who did an amazing job. They always do an amazing job. But this semester was, uh, was really difficult with uh, Corona and everything. So this was fantastic. And uh, also let me thank the, the participants um, who really put in a lot of work and uh, you know, we're, we're very active on all channels and uh, we're a lot of fun uh, to work with. So thanks everyone. Thank you for doing. Um, then Manuel. Okay. Um, I will now present the busy view for the core and advanced lecture. And the lecture that stood out the most for those would be, Side channel attacks and defense by uh, Dr. Michael Schwarz. So sadly, I didn't find him at least in the chat list. So I don't know if he can give a talk. I assume if he doesn't say something now, he can. And yeah, I guess we proceed. Usually we give out the seminar award, but this time we didn't have much data on those. So uh, here's an honorable mention which would be Mathematics for Computer Science 3. Uh, the lecture was quite well organized and uh, had a good engagement, and we wanted to at least mention them for those outstanding um, yeah, attributes. And with this, I would say thank you all for listening and um, thank you, Professor Hoffman. Actually, Professor Reinecke, right? Yes. I will take over. Yes, thank sorry. You. Thank you very much. Um, so I hope you can see the slides that I'm sharing. Um, yeah, so if you have attended the previous couple of kickoffs, what I'm going to say is not going to be, uh, you know, hugely surprising. But to those who are just joining us, this may be very important information, right? So, so I will talk about teaching in the summer term. So first of all, the first good news is that this term is a full length term. Um, even though we have Corona, there's no uh, uh, shortening of the term. So we can cover all the material, hopefully that we would otherwise be covering. So that's great. And now, um, how is teaching going to be carried out? Well, all courses will have to be carried out online. And another good news, um, we will offer a full range of courses. There's no reduction in the number or uh, type of courses that are offered in this term compared with regular terms. As you probably know, all courses can be found in the LSF system. This is also where you can then officially register for taking a course. Uh, many of the courses that will be offered in this term will also be presented later on, right? So this is the uh, the event just following my short presentation, we will go through a uh, presentation of all the uh, courses that are being offered uh, that are not mandatory courses. So uh, the way those courses are going to be carried out, that will depend heavily on the individual lecturer. Given that uh, we have uh, some experience in carrying these out, um, different lecturers will adopt different styles and sort of adopt them to, to their ever uh, preferences. Uh, again, individual course websites will give you more detail about how individual courses are handling it. International students, in particular those who are just joining us, um, you will not be required to be physically present on campus prior to the exams. So we do have, again, the commitment of all the lecturers to enable online participation throughout the term. And sadly, given the current developments, we also do not anticipate um, that during the term, we will be able to, uh, to, to convert lectures into presence um, participation lectures anyway. In any case, there's the commitment that you may participate online. Exams, so this was rather complicated in some of the previous terms due to um, postponed exams from the previous semester. This is a little bit easier uh, this time around. Uh, so exams will take place right after the lecture period ends. And um, 
of course, this means that essentially July 23 or July 26 is when the first exams will take place. There may be exceptions to this uh, when there are good reasons for that. For example, basic courses may offer midterm exams, but then I would also expect that there is some solution for people who cannot make it uh, to attend the respective exams. Again, uh, you may find more detailed information on the respective course websites. Exams and exam inspections, again, as in the previous couple of terms, are possible on campus and we will make sufficient space available and hygiene measures will be adopted. Um, one thing that is new or that has been adopted only recently is that it is mandatory now to wear face masks. Previously, we were strongly recommending this. Now it is actually mandatory. Um, of course, online oral exams are also possible and are our pre preferred solution now for smaller courses where, uh, where uh, the number of exams makes it possible to go on oral. Exam inspections, again, uh, the same rules apply as for written exams. So they can be carried out uh, in presence uh, with the necessary precautions. And I should say that what I've heard from the, um, say, president uh, of the university is that um, from all that we know, uh, there haven't been any uh, you know, infections during exams. So this appears to be quite safe. Okay, um, now to conclude, um, let me just give you some more contact information, right? So if you have any questions, if you need assistance regarding your study organization and progress, if you have questions about uh, examination and study regulations, if you want to discuss academic or personal problems, or if you need information about exchange semesters, uh, our study coordinators, Tanja Breinig and Barbara schulz brünken We'll be very happy to help you with that. And uh, currently you may consult them by email or telephone. Now, uh, if you have um, any issues with uh, examination, um, uh, with the, you know, uh, processing your achievements, the examination office is responsible for that. And we also have a, an SIC system administration team that will help with accounts for uh, our cloud services, uh, seminar system, etc. Okay, and finally, um, yeah, all the information that I gave here and much more and also answers to any questions that you may have posted now during the YouTube chat, they will be uh, given on our Salent Informatics Campus website under this link. So you will also find this if you just navigate to the main page uh, it's one of the main uh, main links there uh, to information about the current semester. Okay, so that concludes my brief presentation about teaching in the summer term. Again, if you do have questions, you know, email us or post them now in the chat and we will try to answer them either right away in the chat or later on on the web pages. And uh, well, that brings us maybe to the core part of today's event, which is the presentation of the courses in the summer term. So let me switch to a different set of slides for that. Just a second. No. Why does it not? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, almost there. Okay, so here we go. I hope you can see the slides. Um, and this time around, we will go through the lecturers in a reverse order, uh, reverse alphabetical order. And so the first set of slides is going to be 
on courses pro provided by the group of Professor Weikert. Joachim, please uh, tell us about your courses. Yeah, hello, my name is Joachim Weikert and uh, this semester our group is offering three classes and two seminars. We are only going to talk about the classes. Um, two things are in common for all three classes. <clears throat> uh, since our, our group belongs both to the math and the computer science department, the classes uh, count either as a computer science class if you're a computer science student, or they may also count as a math class if math is your minor, your Nebenfach, so you can use it in a dual way if you want. And the second thing is that all our classes require some reasonable undergrad math knowledge, such as mathematics for computer scientists one to three. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the first lecture I'm going to offer is the class on image processing and computer vision. This is a classical core class in our computer science program, has received three teaching awards, and it is basically very broad. So it tells you about the broad area of image processing and computer vision in such a way that it covers the things that everybody should know without going too much into depth. So in particular, we talk about things like frequency representations, Fourier, Fourier representations, wavelet representations, how to denoise images, how to analyze motion in videos, how to get 3D reconstruction from stereo imagery and how to recognize and segment objects, for instance. So here you can see an example. This is um, Gary the snail. And for a snail, Gary is relatively fast, so uh, he moves um, from frame one to frame two with a distance of quite some pixels. And on the right hand side, you can see the motion field color coded and you can learn how to achieve those things in that class. Uh, on top of that, uh, this class also enables you to write a bachelor thesis in our group, so it's a necessary and sufficient requirement for that. And uh, we start tomorrow at 10.15 and you can also register there for the tutorial groups. We have seven different slots so that hopefully you find a time slot that uh, accommodates your needs. And for the other two classes, I pass on to Pascal Peter and to Matthias Augustin. Thank you, Joachim. Yes, thank you, Joachim. Um, so the image compression lecture is an advanced class that has uh, four hours of lectures and tutorials every week. And uh, basically you only need some undergraduate mathematics and some rudimentary programming skills to attend it. What's it about? Um, so we are going to give you a broad introduction uh, about image compression. This covers the very basics, information theory, entropy coding and building on that you will also learn about codecs that you might already know from everyday life, uh, like JPEG, for instance. You will also do some simple implementations of those. And we will also tell you about some techniques that have not entered the mainstream yet. So one example that you see here is the in-painting based compression that we also do in our group, where you see at the bottom left of the slide, the original image. We only store a few selected pixels of that and with some sophisticated interpolation or in-painting techniques, we can then reconstruct this. Also, we will talk a bit about learning-based compression. And yeah, if you're interested, I would be very happy to have you. The lectures will be pre-recorded with some live discussions. This is a, a, a concept that has already worked very well in the last summer term. Uh, where it received similar evaluation scores as in the previous presence lectures, which actually some uh, won some awards. And um, yeah, if you want to know more, then you can contact me via the uh, information on the website. And I would be happy if you join our first meeting on next Wednesday. All right, thanks. So, hi everybody. My name is Matthias Augustin. I'm going to offer the course called Numerical Algorithms for Visual Computing. This is an advanced lecture with a three plus one structure. So in practice, that means every other week we will have a tutorial instead of the lecture. Um, what is this all about? So I've 
you study image processing, you will find that you can model a lot of the things we do there by so-called differential equations. For example, they describe diffusion, which we can use for denoising and also for in-painting processes. Now the question is, if you know how to model this, do you also want to compute some solutions? So you need some numerical methods on how to do this. That's how what this lecture is about. So we will learn about numerical methods to solve differential equations. And in the process, we will also encounter linear systems of equations which we have to solve. So another part of this lecture is about solving those linear systems of equations. The lecture themselves is a kind of an inverted classroom lecture. So that means you are supposed to prepare a certain amount of pages from the lecture notes for each online session, which we will then discuss um, during these online sessions. The first one of those will already be in tomorrow morning at 8.30. And if you want to register for this so that I can add you to the team in uh, Teams, then please visit the link given here on uh, the slide uh, where you can find further information on how to register. And I hope I see some of you tomorrow morning. All right, thank you. So next up is uh, Professor Freken, Krillis. Yes. Yes. Ta-da! <laughs> is, I think, the best abbreviation, or at least I know it's the best abbreviation that I could come up with for a course in which we are going to do essentially machine learning, but we don't care so much about what the machine learns. We want to learn from the data ourselves. And for that, we're going to be using machine learning. Um, well, that would give a really bad acronym. So rather topics and algorithmic data analysis, uh, which is a course for which you get six credit points. If you attend, well, it's not mandatory, but there's two hours of lectures a week. Uh, well, that sounds like a wee bit little, especially from the three previous courses we've seen. So there is going to be some additional work, right? And that's, uh, I will uh, essentially make you learn how to read and how to read scientific literature by covering a number of topics on which you then need to read papers, write essays, and on which I will give feedback. What are these topics? These topics are interpretable models. How can we learn something well, that the machine has learned from data? What is causality? And how can we extract causal conclusions from data without you know, just make believe? And last but not least, we're gonna be looking in how can we extract knowledge from large graphs or heterogeneous data as you might call it, but uh, large graphs sounds better. Um, first lecture is on Thursday, starting at 10. Uh, please register by email, I mean, the details are on the website. Um, then I'll share with you the credentials for the Zoom meeting. Everything is gonna be on Zoom. Um, on Wednesday afternoon, and then we are ready to go. Okay. Great. Thanks, Gilles. Well, one more, one more. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I can already give away the most important piece of advice for anybody who's interested in doing a PhD or has a PhD and then wonders, now what? Huh? Most important piece of advice is do not panic. Uh, I'm going to be giving a number of lectures this semester on which I will dispense my advice, uh, the things that I've, I've gathered and input I've got from others on how you can well, hopefully best survive a PhD and beyond. Um, this is gonna be three or four lectures, each roughly 45 minutes each, uh, for which you're gonna get exactly zero credit points. So <laughs> if this is worth it or not, I mean, I'll leave for you to decide. Uh, I hope to see many of you. There is gonna be a website, you will find it through LSF or our group's website uh, itself, uh, but I haven't gotten around to, to populate it properly yet. It will also be announced this lecture through the mailing list once it happens. Should be somewhere in June. Hope to see many of you. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, maybe I'll attend those. <laughs> okay, so Professor Valera is next. Isabel, tell us about your machine learning course. Hi, so here I actually am gonna cover what Gilles said that he's not gonna cover. <laughs> And I'm gonna give you the foundations of machine learning. And this course is gonna be particularly focused on the theoretical foundations of machine learning. So we are gonna start with some probability theory, some Bayesian decision theory, and all the classical foundations of machine learning. But not only that, we will also cover some more um, 
trending, let's say, topics. And we are going to look at societal impact of machine learning from a theoretical perspective. And also, we will end up with deep learning. So the course is uh, two lectures per week plus two hours tutorial. So we will be seeing each other Mondays and Wednesdays. And it is going to be a heavy mathematical course. But if you have taken before some statistical lab elements of machine learning, or you have a strong background in linear algebra, you should good to go. Um, basically, you have information in the CMS for the course. And we have also activated a mailing list where you can reach us out in case you have questions. We will be starting lectures on Monday next week. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is uh, Dr. Ben Stock. Ben. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Jan. Uh, so I can't start with the Tada, but uh, I have to learn something still to be this. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to uh, announce that I'll actually move my, my lecture, uh, which used to be called Web Security. Now it's called Foundations of Web Security, uh, just to avoid some confusion with other similar lectures from the winter to the summer term. Um, so this used to be in the, in the winter now, it's moving to the summer. This is a highly practical lecture on, on web security that covers a number of issues, um, primarily client side, issues such as cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery and so on, as well as service net things like uh, SQL injections and a bit of infrastructure security. So in essence, you learn the, the basics and the foundations of anything that is related to, to web security. And uh, so this is also a six credit point course, and I only do two hours of lecture per week. So I also, inspired by Yilis, need to figure out a way to, to make you work a little bit for these, these credit points. And uh, that is why this course is actually accompanied by a number uh, of, of practical tasks. And these essentially allow you to understand more of what I was talking about in theory in the lecture uh, to then apply that in practice. So you, you learn all these things, things essentially by heart. It will be an inverted-ish, classroom, um, meaning that there will be pre-recorded uh, videos, but we will have one uh, quiz session every week where essentially you will upfront get uh, the, the questions and then we discuss them together in, in class and you can also ask your own questions about the, the topics that we've covered. Uh, in addition, uh, starting from this term, there will actually be a reading guide or a script uh, with all the content from the lecture, uh, as well as some hints on how to solve the exercises so people don't get stuck uh, as much as they tended to do in some of the previous iterations. Um, and I added the average scores for the last four iterations here, uh, because in essence, people like this course, but also they said this was a lot of effort uh, with the particular uh, WTF question mark uh, uh, for last semester, because all of a sudden it was that much more work, although it was the same course as one year earlier. So I have no idea what happened there. Uh, maybe COVID made it a little bit more, more tough even. Um, and if you want to register for the course, uh, go through the, the CMS of, of CISPA. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, and there you'll see that you cannot directly register for this course. And this is because we have a self-assessment uh, thing that you have to do up front. You can, if you feel confident that you will be able to uh, kind of have the, the time to, to spend on this course, just click through the, all the exercises. You will still be able to register even if you get zero points on the self-assessment. Uh, it's just to, to make sure that you know what you can expect, essentially. All right, that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Next up is Professor Sorge. Christoph, tell us about your course. Right, so thanks for having me. Um, the course is IT Forensics, um, which is about uh, gathering evidence and doing the entire process from being attacked or attacking someone till you end up in jail. Um, we do that because we are um, an interdisciplinary working group. So I'm actually with the faculty of law and co-opted with the uh, faculty of mathematics and computer science. Uh, so we do deal with all the topics um, relating to both law and computer science, um, starting with data protection and now um, in, in that instance uh, with IT forensics. So the guiding topic of the lecture is how to find evidence and how to secure that evidence in computer systems so that it will be acceptable in a court of law and how to present that evidence in court. Um, we start by some general considerations uh, like the prosecutor's fallacy should you prosecute someone because he's suspicious because something unlikely or improbable happened? 
um, like, should you um, prosecute a lottery winner? Because winning the lottery is unlikely. Uh, we then uh, switch to uh, the actual computer science related topics. So how do you collect persistent data like data on a hard disk or an SSD drive? How to analyze data in file systems? How to analyze data from main memory? And in the end, how to present that evidence in court as an expert witness. So it's say 90% the technical aspects, 10% legal aspects. Uh, so it's actually really um, a CS focused lecture. Uh, the lecture will start tomorrow at 10. There will be at least one tutorial and depending on the number of uh, students that we're going to have, we will offer one more tutorial. So the dates will be announced um, within the next couple of days and the tutorials will start next week. For further information, you can look up our webpage, um, send us an email or register for the course in the CMS. So that's cms.cispa.saarland, um, like in uh, Ben Stock's case. Um, and the lecture will be a Zoom live lecture. Um, and the link uh, will be available on the uh, CMS and on the lecture webpage. And with that, I hand uh, back over to Jan. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings us to Professor Smolka. Gerd, uh, tell us about your course. Thank you. Okay, I will be giving the core course, Introduction to Computational Logic. We have the first lecture this Wednesday at 12.15, and then the next lecture is Friday at 2.15. We already had an office hour this morning and we have another office hour tomorrow morning where you can get help with installing the program, programming system we use, the Coq Theo Improver. Uh, so what is this course about? So one buzzword is already on the slide, computational logic. Let me give you two further buzzwords in case you have heard about it. There is computational type theory and there is interactive theory improving. So in more detail, what will you learn? You will learn a programming language for developing computational and mathematical theories. So that means you have an informal idea what you would like to model, and then you write definitions to create it. And then of course you are interested in the properties of your model. So you state theorems and you start proving them. Okay, and this is the thing that keeps it together. Um, what makes it different to Ordinary mathematics is that we do everything in the programming language and that we construct the definitions and the proofs interactively with the so-called proof assistant. Uh, then there are practical and theoretical aspects to it. So what you will learn is computational type theory which is a foundational theory that is at the same level as set theory. We will not use, use the usual set theory, but we will use computational type theory for good reasons that will be, become clear. We will look at many uh, case studies to name a few. Of course, we will construct numbers from first principles. Lists are very important. We will look at compila compilation and correctness of compilation. We will look at regular expressions matching. We will look at propositional type systems. Um, the foundational issues connected to this, so you will see, uh, is the notion of intuitionistic proof, of computer verified proof, and of general inductive definitions. What you learn is important for programming languages, for hardware and software verification, for automated reasoning in general, and for mathematics. So we usually also have some students from mathematics. Uh, the course uh, is well suited for online teaching for two reasons. We have comprehensive lecture notes so there is a book which, which is almost finished. 
okay, about the subject, which we will follow closely. And then uh, everything we do, you also do with the interactive prover and interaction means that prover gives you immediate feedback. Uh, so if you want to participate, please uh, visit uh, the course page. You can go through my homepage and register so that you have the Zoom links and if possible, uh, install the theorem prover. Okay, thank you very okay. much. Great, thank you. That sounds very interesting. And our next presenter is Professor Slusadek. Philip, are you there? I am there, yes, thank you. Um, welcome everyone, uh, also from my side. Uh, before I come to our lecture, let me quickly say that we also offer two seminars, one on rendering techniques and one on game development technologies. Uh, the latter seminar has been extremely popular. Um, I think we had over 120 applications. Um, and so obviously uh, most of them couldn't make it, um, but um, rest assured we will most likely offer this uh, again in the coming semester. So there, there are other chances. Maybe you can even scale this up a little bit. Um, so coming to the lecture, this is the advanced lecture on realistic image synthesis that I'll teach together with Karol Miskowski and Gurpreet Singh from the Max Planck Institute next door. Um, it's uh, an advanced lecture building on top of the computer graphics lectures we typically have in the winter. We, we always have in the winter semester. Uh, but you can take it um, also if you have, for some reason, not taking the, the, the core lecture. Um, that might, there might be some additional work, of course, involved in doing so, but it, it's possible and people have done that. Um, we want to really bring you up to the point where you can actually, um, where, where you can read and you can hopefully maybe even write papers um, for the state of the art. Um, it actually turns out that during the summer semester, we also have our key specialized conference, the Eurographics uh, Symposium on Rendering, and um, we'll not have lectures during that week. So you can actually um, visit uh, the conference, uh, which is free uh, virtually now. Um, anyway, so in this lecture, so we will really uh, teach you um, how to render real, highly realistic images um, through various techniques, specifically a Monte Carlo uh, integration techniques, sampling techniques um, that do lighting simulation and uh, at the end allow you to render uh, highly realistic images. We'll also uh, look a little bit into hardware support for making it fast. We'll also uh, look into animation, uh, sorry, specifically perception and dynamic range imaging um, aspects that play an important role. Um, if the images are meant for the um, consumption by humans, um, but increasingly, and uh, this is a, a big topic of our research, um, realistic images are not just meant to be consumed by humans, um, like in the film industry and gaming and many other aspects, but increasingly uh, those synthetically generated images are being consumed by AI systems. There's a whole direction uh, that uses synthetically generated uh, data for training AI systems, for validating AI systems, and hopefully eventually for certifying AI um, systems. And what's even more interesting, and it also makes this course more interesting is that you might have heard that ray tracing technologies have now been integrated into GPUs uh, in hardware, so there's hardware support for that. This is something we're, we're using here that we're building on top, and um, that enables, uh, will enable um, way more uh, and faster and more widespread use of all of this. And so it's not limited to the film industry or, or gaming anymore. It's, it's really opening it up for a large class of applications going forward. Um, there's four uh, hours of lecture every week, Mondays from 10 to 12. The introductory lecture was already this morning, but you didn't miss much. It's already available on, it's, it's already uh, available on video. Um, and the, uh, so the real first lecture that addresses um, the, the content will be on Thursday. 
Um, their organization is lectures, will have weekly assignments and they're most likely an oral exam at the end. Um, if you wanna know more, contact me uh, on email or check out our web pages, which you see the link here. Thank you. And back to you, Jan. <laughs> Thank you, Philip. Okay, this brings us to Professor Rahman. Uh, also a warm welcome from me uh, to our faculty. Please uh, present your course or actually your, your work. Yeah, hi. So I, 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 I didn't actually know how, how the organization of this event is. So I kind of presented myself in the beginning already, but just to repeat it very quickly, maybe. Um, I teach bioinformatics courses mainly, but these are algorithmic bioinformatics courses. So I'm teaching the algorithms for sequence analysis this semester mainly, and uh, will offer later also seminars on algorithms and data structures applied to bioinformatics. So this might be interesting for some other computer science students as well. We also offer bachelor and master's thesis in this field. Um, if you would like more information, please visit my website. And I apologize that it still has the old design, so it has not been updated yet. I will do this in the next weeks. Um, and now I can tell you a little bit about my lecture on the next slide. So this is a, this is a special lecture um, for the bioinformatics master students in particular, but again, it is very algorithmic in nature. So it might be interesting for other students as well. Um, we will deal with a number of topics related to biological sequence analysis. So first of all, uh, we start with some, something very familiar, which is just exact and approximate pattern matching. So you look for a certain string or actually more complex pattern in a long text, like, like a human genome or something like that. We discuss full text inverted indices. So in particular suffix trees and suffix arrays and also particular implementations of them. And of course, all the state of the art applications to biosequences. This is also related um, somehow to text compression and succinct indexing. So it turns out that you can store essentially a full text index in about the same space that the text needs if you do proper compression. Um, then we go on with classical bioinformatics topics like pairwise and multiple sequence alignment and um, go very much in, de in depth and beyond what is taught in the basic lectures. Um, we also discussed several models for patterns. So a pattern can be something that's much more than a simple string. Uh, we also discussed how to find, let's say, overrepresented motifs in DNA and protein sequences. We discuss so-called alignment-free methods for solving certain questions. Uh, these are methods that are related to uh, small substrings of length k. So so-called k-mares and, and hashing algorithms. Um, and, and maybe some other special topics depending on how, how fast we can go. There is some more information on my website. So you have to click through uh, rahmanlab.de, uh, Lehre, which is teaching, and then algorithms for sequence analysis. This, this will direct you onward and you can register in the course management system of Saarland Informatics Campus. There are four lecture hours and uh, two tutorial hours um, this term. So the lecture times are Tuesday around noon and Thursday morning. And there are some proposals for the tutorials. Um, so if you register, please indicate your preferences. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Now we come to Dr. Narayanan. I hope I pronounced your name. Oh, you did very well, thank you. Uh, I'm Anand uh, at CESPA, and I'll be teaching a course on uh, algebraic coding theory. Um, so uh, coding theory is the science of um, reliable transmission of information in the presence of noise. Uh, say for instance, oops, sorry. Say for instance, a satellite wants to send back uh, an image of Jupiter. So what it does is it uh, expands the message 
which is a picture into a, a redundant longer string called as a code word and transmits it. And um, the code words corresponding to different messages are designed to be distant so that uh, despite a few errors, we can recover the original uh, message. And uh, we will see how uh, to keep both the rate of information transmission and the error tolerance simultaneously high. Okay, so that's the first objective. But uh, beyond digital communication, coding theory has uh, profound implications on theoretical computer science. Um, we will discuss uh, certain codes that played a starring role in uh, proving theorems such as the PCP theorem and uh, IP equals P space theorem. And the final third of the course uh, will involve um, exciting, very recent uh, research topics. Uh, say for instance, uh, two owls who are both honest want to play a game of chess. And in fact, uh, it should be a blindfold chess. So being owls, uh, they don't need actual blindfolds. They can just swivel their heads and they have an annoying friend who is yelling in the middle of the game. So if they just play the game and say the first move is D2, and if this move is heard in error and interpreted as B2, then uh, the two owls are completely playing different games and they're out of sync. So we will see how to encode this game so that even if a constant fraction of the moves are heard in error, the game uh, can be reconstructed by them in their heads uh, in a uniform manner. And uh, one last comment uh, on the word algebraic in the topic. So uh, algebraic here um, essentially means that uh, we'll keep seeing polynomials throughout the course and they will haunt you in your dreams. So uh, a little bit of affinity towards mathematics will uh, help best enjoy the course. And for uh, uh, further details, please consult the course map page. Thank you. All right, great. Next up is Professor Majo. Martina, please right. tell us about your embedded systems class. Thanks a lot, Jan. So um, I am teaching embedded system this semester. And uh, in particular, we are going to look at uh, the development of uh, an embedded platform that has to interact with the physical environment around it uh, and at control systems. Uh, so we are going to first look at uh, uh, how to model the physical environment around us. And we are going to use uh, ordinary differential equations or difference equations for continuous time, time uh, continuous linear time invariant systems or discrete time linear time invariant systems. And then once we have looked at uh, how these systems are modeled, we can look at how we can control them. So how we can change their behavior so that they do what we actually want. So you can imagine a robot that is navigating in an environment and has to follow a given trajectory. What you want to do is specify how the motors should move in order to, for the trajectory to be followed precisely. And we are not only going to look at that from the point of view of the control side, but we are also going to look at the computation. So we are also going to look at how to implement control tasks and real-time tasks in general, and some fundamentals about scheduling, so how to schedule CPU and computing resources. And the course is already available on CMS. The material is pre-recorded, but there will be some live interactions and some tutorials. And you can contact me if you want to know more, or you can check the website on CMS. And I'm happy to see you tomorrow at 2.15. All right, thank you, Martina. Next up is Professor Maas, Wolfgang. Teaching data science. Ja, mein Name ist Wolfgang Maas. Ich bin derjenige, der bei. Uh, I'm, I'm Wolfgang Maas. I'm the guy with a dollar sign in what the student council said. I'm professor of business informatics. Uh, I'm co-opted to computer science and I'm also at the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence, the FKI. So the data science course I'm going to run is a, um, maybe the next slide. Yes. Um, it is a six CP course. That means um, uh, it is two hours per week, uh, but it's pre-recorded and we have a wrap up every day, uh, every week with questions and answers on Friday 11.45 by Zoom. 
So the lecture data science is um, a pretty old lecture, um, maybe due to the fact that there is also a whole program on data science, it should be data science in business. So what we look at is um, how AI in particular machine learning can be applied to various business applications. So we bridge AI and management and uh, the practical side of what we're doing looks into pricing and sales forecasting, which is quite an important topic in any kind of business. Um, the focus is on looking at the practical side of data science cycle uh, from the problem statement and data engineering uh, training, but also deployment into services for decision making. Um, so therefore, uh, with respect to what we have seen previously, it's more the application of various machine learning models. And we added uh, to the course also some more recent models um, and we uh, use the exercises uh, to show some practical experience and uh, the students should learn how to deploy that on various platforms. As I said, the lectures are recorded um, and um, so can, take, uh, can be taken whenever the students want. Uh, we offer a Q&A session uh, where we give a summary every Friday and uh, discuss uh, open issues. Um, we have practical work on Fridays as well, where we go into certain kind of libraries. We go into, on, on the various uh, platforms and uh, so that the students learn from the practical side. Um, uh, what might be special is that we run mini projects uh, that is in the second part of the lectures where the students actually develop um, services based on uh, data science uh, developments. Uh, uh, additionally, we have guest lectures from industry to, to back it up. And um, so I think it is a, quite a concise package. So thank you very much. Back to you, John. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, now we're moving on to Professor Köhler. And uh, yeah, tell us about the artificial intelligence course, please. Uh, so I'm here for Professor oh, Köhler. Oh, <laughs> That's okay. Um, so the lecture is actually happening right now. That's why I'm here. Um, but uh, all the lectures are also recorded. So if you've missed this lecture, it's not a problem. You can just listen to it whenever you find the time. Um, so the artificial intelligence lecture is basically a basic uh, introduction to everything in artificial intelligence. Um, it gives you a general introduction into the field of artificial intelligence its history, key assumptions, paradigms, concepts, and fundamental methods. Um, you will learn and apply uh, techniques developed in the fields of inte intelligent agents, search algorithms, and game playing, knowledge representation, logical reasoning, deduction, planning, constraint reasoning, uh, machine learning, and reasoning under uncertainty. And um, with the knowledge that you acquire in this course, you will be well prepared to um, attend any other AI lectures offered uh, here or write your bachelor or master's thesis uh, in the field of AI. And new this year, we have um, actually introduced a chatbot, which um, is kind of, can be kind of your personal uh, teaching assistant, which you can ask uh, questions related to the course and it can read out um, yeah, parts of the lecture to you. Yeah. All right, thank you. And uh, our next presenter is Professor Klako. Dietrich, uh, can you present the digital signal processing course? Yeah, hi, so welcome. So my, my group is offering three courses uh, this semester. The first one is the digital signal processing. Um, the list of topics is there. This is kind of the, the list of signal processing steps that you would typically do in a spoken dialogue system or a speech recognition system. So the typical front end operations like localizing a speaker, removing noise, um, improving signal quality, stuff like that. The lecture will be taught every Monday, so starting next week on Microsoft Teams. And um, the tutorials will be set by a Doodle so if you're interested, kind of go to the web page and uh, register for the course by clicking on the appropriate links. The second class 
is statistical natural language processing. Um, it has two main parts. The first one is on language modeling. And um, it will be an introduction to basic language models, kind of how to measure the quality, elementary algorithms, information theoretic concepts. Um, and then we talk about applications in natural language processing like sequence labeling, topic detection, information retrieval. The lecture will be taught um, Fridays at 8.30. We will be starting on April 23rd. Um, what I'd forgotten to say, but it's now good to mention, um, it's good if you're there on Fridays, it's 8.30, but I will also record. Of course, it's a bit pointless if I'm the only one who's up there and nobody kind of interacts with me, but if it's a bit too early, there will be recordings. I said, kind of still, I'm happy about we, you actually coming there and discussing because I think kind of discussion is what makes a lecture really interesting. And then on the next slide, um, you heard a lot about artificial intelligence and deep learning and the real fun is doing things. So one of my postdocs, Ali, is offering a software project where you will be um, actually kind of building something specifically on representation learning. So if you're interested in getting a hands-on experience in representation learning, send an email to Ali. The email address is given at the bottom of the slide and he will then kind of arrange with you the details. Thank you, Dietrich. So next up is uh, Dr. Karrenbauer who will be teaching optimization. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Andreas Karrenbauer. I'm a senior researcher at the Max Planck Institute for Informatics. Uh, my field of research is called optimization, which is also the name of this core course that I will be teaching this semester. What is optimization? Well, optimization appears everywhere. Whenever there's a choice between several alternatives, there is an inherent optimization problem. In this course, you will learn that almost all practically relevant problems or optimization tasks can be formulated as a search for a minimum of a linear function subject to linear and integrality constraints. Um, moreover, you will be introduced to a rich toolbox to analyze and solve uh, such problems. Therefore, it's not only practically relevant, but also very important for research in theoretical computer science. And indeed, this is a theoretical core lecture, um, but there will be some optional practical exercises as well. The lecture will start on Wednesday at 2.15. If you would like to participate, please go to uh, the website and register to the mailing list and especially to the Moodle because there you will find the link to uh, the online lecture. Thank you. All right, thank you. I should say that we will publish the slides. So if anyone uh, needs uh, the links, they will get them from there uh, if they don't find them elsewhere. So next up is Professor Holger Hermanns, um, who is offering a number of courses, including space informatics. Who's gonna present this one? I'm here. I am calling to you from outer space. Wow. I hope you can hear me. Uh, <laughs> I'm in zero gravity. And uh, I'm presenting you some stuff that we are going to do this, this uh, summer term. For three times, we have done this as a block course in the summer. Now we are doing this regularly. And we are trying to explain you um, what, uh, what you have to know about informatics if, if you are in outer space or if you want to prepare for outer space. So it's about system design, communication, planning and operation, and application challenges. So there are a lot of things uh, like storytelling uh, about space debris, about uh, missions, uh, how to go to the moon, and uh, actually the mathematics behind it and the informatics behind it. And uh, we are combining this in a nice lecture. This Most of this is, is uh, uh, um, material that is, that is available online. We have a meeting once per week where we either do office hours or we do tutorials or we do a bit of live lecturing. This is uh, Thursdays from two to four. There is a there is a small issue 
uh, there, namely when we were doing this as a block course, then this was basically, it was, there was a small population and we are using a specialized tool for which we have only uh, an, a handful actually, while well, we have 20 concurrent licensees and we wanted to work with that. So for instance, we, are, we will be planning uh, how to land on the moon, right? And this software that we're using with which we're interfacing and there will be some programming involved, as I say, has only a limited number of, of licensees. So we, so we are actually currently, we are overbooked and we are trying to make room by actually somehow scheduling the access to the tool in one way or another. So if you're interested, please basically go to the website that is mentioned there. And uh, we, we are trying to make sure that you all get room, but at the moment we cannot guarantee this. To give you some indication of what this is all about, what you see there uh, in, in, on the right, the, the picture there of this, uh, of this uh, kind of satellite, this is actually the size of a shoebox. So I have here, you know what a shoebox is, right? So this is the size, I, I hope you can see this. Well, how do I do this now? I, uh, this is the size of the, of the satellite that actually we are at the moment uh, uh, commanding in space. And uh, why we are doing this and how to do this energy efficient and what is the algorithmics behind this, this will be the course. Cool. Thank you, Holger. Are you also going to be presenting the ethics for nerds? Um, no, Zara. No, yeah, that would be me. Um, hello, my name is Sarah Sterz, and together with Kevin Baum and Holger Hermanns, I am lecturing ethics for nerds. Um, this is the course about, well, ethics, obviously. And what we're going to do there is, well, we're going to train you to um, overcome moral problems that you are likely to face sometime in your career. So whether you'll be in the industry or in research, you probably will stumble across, well, moral tripwires at some point, and we will try to equip you to handle those better. In order to, to do that, we're going to discuss ethics with you. So what is right and wrong? What do philosophers have to say about what is right and wrong? Uh, and also we are going to look at um, critical thinking uh, techniques, basically. So what is, an, if, what is a good argument? How can, I, um, how can I discuss things properly? And we do that because, well, in ethics, if you're not a trained philosopher, things can tend to get a bit wishy-washy and hand-wavy, and we don't like uh, wishy-washy hand-wavy things, so we try to teach you to do it as precise as possible. Uh, and then we're going to apply all those skills that we acquired in the first part of the course about ethics and precise thinking or critical thinking to topics that are relevant for computer scientists, like filter bubbles, like machine learning, like privacy issues, um, digital manipulation, all kinds of things and also probably uh, to some, well, cool sci-fi topics like super intelligences, but that only, well, very brief, briefly. Yeah, so that's what we're doing in the course. Um, it is an advanced lecture, a Vertiefungsvorlesung. It is worth six credit points and uh, it's entirely self-paced, or at least almost entirely self-paced. So you will have to meet in a group from time to time, but also you can uh, schedule your group meetings with your uh, with with your with, with the other group mem members to your liking. So there is no time slot where you have to be present uh, and have to listen to a lecture or so. So we have lecture videos. We have um, exercises that you can do. Uh, we will have most likely a take home exam in the end. So you don't even have to be present at university at at all for this course. And uh, yeah, you can do everything at, at your own pace uh, and in your own time. But don't worry, you won't be left alone with any of that. We have plenty of opportunities for you to ask questions. Like um, we have office hours regularly. Uh, we have a forum where you can ask questions and uh, you, will be, you won't be alone in any of that. So if, we're, if you are interested, then check out the course uh, behind this QR code or with the link below that. And uh, we'd be very happy to see you in Ethics for Nerds. Great, thank you. And that brings us to Professor Herfit. Yes, hello everyone. I hope you can hear me. So 
We'll be offering uh, one point question mark courses this semester. So I start with a one. Um, the one is the audiovisual communication and networks, which is on 5G. Um, so there is no computer system today that doesn't have a communication interface, either wired or wireless. And obviously one of the most famous and most uh, up-to-date and high P um, interfaces is 5G. So we'll educate you on uh, 5G. Uh, the course will start tomorrow um, around noon, so Tuesdays 12.15 to uh, 1.45 and Wednesdays in the morning. Um, it follows the same procedure as my colleague Dirich Klarko already gave you, so we'll do the course live. Um, I'll do it live. I hope you join because that gives you the opportunity to really discuss um, and be part of the class. However, um, the course will be recorded and is available to all registered students. So you can also use it afterwards or if you cannot make a class uh, at a certain point in time, you can then join it later on. So you don't miss a thing, but obviously you then don't benefit from the classroom. The implementation is we have uh, an electronic book. Um, I will show you tomorrow how to access the, uh, the book. Uh, every student or all students can subscribe to the book. It's a campus license. Um, it's a very yeah, solid 5G new radio background book. Um, we have an interactive manuscript that gives you the theory because the book um, is more or less on the surface, but to understand how things work, uh, you need the theory behind, which we will give you in an interactive manuscript based on um, Python notebooks. We will have quizzes and tutorials and use um, the Moodle platform for it. Um, Moodle is also used for you to register. So please, if you want to participate in the course, register, find it on the Moodle page. Also on our uh, web page, there is a link, link to the Moodle page and the Moodle page will then also give you uh, a link to uh, the Teams. So the lecture will be done via MS Teams. Um, all registered students, I will take care even this evening and tomorrow morning uh, that all registered students are invited into the team. So you, in addition to the available links, get a mail um, where the lecture takes place. Yeah, from the, from the content, uh, we'll do everything around 5G new radio. So how wireless transmission works, what the propagations are, what link budgets are, why it works, how it works in the different frequency domains that it's working in how users are separated in the time, in the frequency, in the code, or even in the space domain, and what this new word like MIMO really is and how it really works. Um, Jan, next slide. This is now the point X, uh, and point X because um, the course is called Hands-On Networking, and as the name already says, it is meant to be hand, uh, hands-on. So it is planned as a block course uh, starting in August um, or uh, actually it lasts four weeks. Two weeks is block course with uh, practical uh, parts in it and lecturing or lecturish parts in it. And then two weeks of project work. However, this all only makes sense if we're at least partially uh, enabled to do this in presence. Otherwise, it's not really hands on. Um, so the implementation is unfortunately yet to be decided. We'll have an admission test, which is in July. So up to the point of July, don't note down the date. Up to this point, we have the possibility to, to decide how things evolve and whether it makes sense to do it or whether it makes sense to postpone it. We will not do it purely virtual because hands-on purely virtual is a bit weird. Right. We'll nevertheless make all the slides available. So just send us a, uh, a mail if you are interested in. You can also register via the Moodle site, but I cannot guarantee as of today whether we really do it or whether you need to be to postpone it by one semester. Yeah, um, the content is the networking practice. So really, how do how do wired and wireless networks work? What is with the network addressing IP in the current version v4 and in the uh, yeah newer but also current version v6? Different transport protocols and um, all the network management and debugging if things really don't work uh, as you expect them to work. Contact address is given. Um, and that was the introduction of my two courses for the summer semester. Great, thanks. I hope I hope you'll be able to carry the second one out in person. I also hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next course is going to be given by Professor Feldman, but uh, it's not going to be presented by her. But I think Oliver Gasser is going to tell us about that course.
Yes, that's right. So yeah, my name is Oliver Gasser, and together with Anja Feldman, uh, Devashish Kozain, and Savas Zanetto, we will be teaching the Data Networks uh, lecture this semester. And um, so the question that will be answered in this lecture is like, what kind of foundations, what actually enables the internet to, to evolve from a very simple network, which you can see on the left side of the slide where you have just uh, four hosts to uh, a, a multi-billion uh, um, host network that we have today, which is visualized on the right side of the slide. And we will do a, a very deep dive into different uh, network architectures and the protocols involved there and technologies. And some questions uh, that we will answer in this course are, for example, like what actually happens uh, when you type a, uh, a URL in your browser and to open a website? Like how are the domain names uh, translated from, for example, unisaland.de uh, uh, to their respective IP addresses? How are the uh, requests routed through the internet to the web server, which is actually hosting the content? And what happens if a lot of people at the same time uh, want to access the same resource? So what happens if there is congestion uh, in the network? So, so uh, how can we avoid congestion? What kind of methods uh, are available for that case? Another example uh, that I want to give uh, to you is uh, how do video streaming providers uh, actually ensure that content is available uh, across the globe uh, in a uh, fast manner, right? So you want to access, uh, for example, your, your uh, YouTube videos, um, or your Netflix videos uh, from from uh, from Germany, but from also from the U.S., from uh, from countries in Africa, uh, from Australia as well. So how how do the, how is this content actually uh, being distributed? How do um, these uh, providers uh, identify what is the relevant content for them? So they might not want to uh, make like your you know random cat videos. Uh, uh, replicated all over the world, which is just uh, watched by, let's say, a couple of people, but some more important and relevant videos might be replicated to a lot of different places. And the third example that uh, I want to give to you uh, is um, a completely different topics, but it's uh, it's also uh, kind of related to, to networking, and this is uh, social networks. And um, in this uh, specific area, we were looking at what kind of uh, role do trolls and memes play uh, in social networking? And for example, how do memes spread from uh, one platform to the other platform? Or uh, how are fringe communities uh, moving from uh, between uh, the different platforms? Um, this lecture uh, is uh, will be presented as uh, self-contained downloaded videos. So you can watch them uh, whenever you want. They will be basically available one to two weeks before the kind of lecture date. Um, and we will then have interactive uh, live Q&A sessions where you will, will briefly revisit the lecture uh, material and you can then um, ask uh, questions and we can start discussions. We will also do some uh, live demos uh, for some uh, tools that uh, are relevant for the specific topics. And we will also have uh, engaging uh, exercises and tutorials as well. Um, the first uh, Q&A will be happening tomorrow on Tuesday at uh, 4 p.m. So uh, I would be happy to see a lot of you there. Thank you. Thank you, Oliver. Now we get to a course that is actually co-taught by uh, Nico Döttling, Antoine Zhu, and Kas Kremers, and this is cryptography. Thanks for the introduction. So I'm Nico, and um, as you can tell, I'm not a big fan of cluttered slides. Um, this course uh, is a core lecture and has uh, uh, nine e ETCS points. Uh, you can find the link to the lecture here, uh, and you can you can sign up for the course and get some uh, basic information there. Um, we're going to start with this course uh, next week. The lecture will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12, from 12.30 to uh, 1.30 or 1, depending on uh, how much ground we'll have to cover. And uh, uh, this year, we uh, teach this course kind of in three segments. The first segment will be uh, taught by me, which uh, will cover the basics of cryptography. Second one by Antoine Zhu will cover cryptanalysis. And the 
third segment taught by Cas Kremers will talk about uh, how to actually use crypto in practice or how how is crypto used in everyday protocols. I mean, if you're in a browser here, you might have seen the um, the green padlock that means uh, the connection is encrypted. <clears throat> if you're watching this through YouTube, uh, you should see this um, icon. Quickly, uh, uh, for what we're doing in this course, I mean, I get this question a lot from students. No, you're not going to learn how to uh, design or come up with your own cryptographic codes. What you're going to learn is how to use cryptography as a methodology. So in most fields of computer science, uh, you can actually have a hands-on experience. If you come up with a new algorithm to, to do something better and faster, you can run this algorithm to see, you can implement this algorithm and run it to see if it really does uh, what it's supposed to and if it does, it does so in a fast way. In crypto, that's slightly different. Uh, when you claim your system is secure, you have to take uh, into account all conceivable adversaries who might uh, attack this system. And you can't just go through all of them. So what we're gonna teach you in this course is a robust methodology uh, with which you can uh, show or demonstrate that a system is secure against a, an unknown adversary uh, whose, whose powers you um, maybe don't fully comprehend. Okay. That's it from my side. Thanks. Thank you, Nico. Okay, just a second. All right. So last but not least, Professor Markus Bläser will tell us about complexity theory. Okay, so um, in a few years, you made a fortune by applying machine learning to something. And then you have the financial freedom and the time to think about really important problems. Okay. And then you will be happy that you took the complexity theory course where you learned really fundamental questions on computation uh, of philosophical depths, right? So if you like the Grundzüge der Theoretischen Informatik here in the Brücken or if you're from somewhere else, this is the typical introduction to computability and complexity theory, which is taught all around the world. Uh, say following the book by Sipsar, uh, then this will be your lecture. Right? We will further investigate the P versus NP problem. We will ask philosophical questions like, what is the value of randomness? Are there problems with efficient randomized algorithms that do not have efficient deterministic ones? So does God throw dice? How hard is counting? So despite what you learned in elementary school, uh, counting turns out to be extremely hard. And how do we prove lower bounds in general and impossibility results? Yeah. So the lecture will be um, Monday and Wednesday. So we start this Wednesday, so we haven't missed anything. So I skipped the lecture today. And um, the lectures will be live. So we'll have the uh, possibility to interact via chat or uh, with me. And we will record these lectures and they will be made available um, after. And all the other further information you find uh, on the CMS web page. And there you can also register for the course. Thank you. All right, thank you, Marcus. And uh, well, uh, this is the end of the beginning, right? Uh, so um, yeah, let me conclude this session by uh, maybe stopping the share so you can see who is left. <laughs> and uh, to wish you, uh, well, a great semester at Saarland Informatics Campus and at Saarland University. And of course, um, stay safe and um, well, see you around. Uh, soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>